So I've been reading a whole lot of novels by a guy named Junji Ito, an author recommended to me by a buddy about a year ago. Junji Ito is now among one of my favorite horror writers of all time. In fact, there's one novel in particular out of all of Junji Ito's that has me especially enamored. Tomi. Like the many boys found in the series, I find myself smitten with Tomi. Who is she? What is she? Is she a demon? A god? An alien? Some plant-based life form? What the fuck is she? And that? That is what I'd like to explore today. What do you think of when thinking of Tomi? Boys are obsessed with her, girls can't stand her. When a boy is with her for a prolonged amount of time, his eyes and cheekbones look more and more sunken, almost like he's being drained. On top of this, she's seemingly immortal. To me, this sounds like a succubus. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the anime kind we were probably thinking of with the bat wings and the heart-shaped tail and the unsatiable lust. No. I'm talking about a traditional succubus. Something closer to what is found in European medieval lore. Just like Tomi, they're selfish creatures. They don't love men, they use men. In addition, succubus, as you probably already know, have an irresistible allure to them, their whole gimmick is that they drain the life force out of men, and, because they're demons, they can't die. Ringing a bell now? If the similarities hadn't occurred to you till now, it should be blatantly obvious when reading it again. Now that I've gotten your attention, let's get into the real juicy stuff. So we've established that Tomi is a succubus. Alright, but if she is a succubus, then what kind of succubus is she? I went and did a little research at my local library and I came to find out that while she did have a similar tone to the European medieval succubus, that was only in a general sense. In a more specific story based sense, I discovered that Tomi was actually based off of a more localized variety of succubus called yokai. Now to clarify, not all yokai are succubus, but there are succubus among the yokai. Yokai, for those of you who don't know, are ghosts, spirits, gods, and monsters that all generally existed in the Edo period of Japan, also known as Japan from 1603 to 1867. The first story that profoundly proved the connection I was making between the succubus yokai and Tomi was the legend of the Yukiona. The Yukiona is a spirit that is usually identified as a young beautiful woman with long black hair who's seen roaming around a snowy mountain pass. The way these stories will usually go about is men will stumble upon her during a winter storm after getting lost and through one fate or another meet a gruesome end either by having their life consumed, freezing to death, or something of the like. If you've read chapter 5 of Tomi, you'd have now noticed how eerily similar both that chapter and this yokai sound to each other. Let's take another look at chapter 5 real quick. It starts out with a group of men who traverse a snowy mountain, and after stumbling across a young beautiful woman with long black hair, they, one by one, each meet an unfortunate end, as well as find themselves lost within a snowstorm during the whole journey. At the end of the story, the last surviving member finds another copy of Tomi consuming a frozen body. Both stories took place on a snowy mountain pass. Both stories had women of a similar description. And finally, both stories had said woman consuming her victims as well as said victims meeting bad ends like being frozen to death. Another aspect I'd like to point out is the fact that Tomi had said in that story that she came back from the dead to seek revenge on her boyfriend. What's neat about this is the fact that some yokai are created from the fear or hatred someone felt at the time of their death, a type of hatred that could lead to revenge one might say. You have to admit, with all this on the table, the similarities are pretty staggering. After stumbling upon the startling similarities of both the Tomi chapter and the Yukiona story, I began to wonder whether or not most, if not all the other chapters of Tomi held some inspiration from yokai folklore. And lo and behold, they did. Chapter 1 of Book 3, Little Finger. 
Tomi is featured as a skeletal woman who, despite her eroded appearance, eventually woos the male main character. This is reminiscent of the Hone Ona, who is not only similar to Tomi because they drain life just like Tomi, but they're also known for their skeletal appearance which their lover doesn't take into account. Chapter 2, Book 3 Boy Tomi is found wet in a cave around a rocky beach and after being discovered by a little boy, takes interest in him. This version of Tomi is eerily similar to the Iso Ona and Nure Ona, considering both are always sopping wet as well as both are usually found on rocky beaches. It's also good to note how the Nure Ona is always seen carrying what looks to be a small child swaddled in a bundle. I thought this was interesting because in addition to the previous comparisons, she also has a child included into the dynamic of her lore, just like the Tomi found in this chapter. Going back to all the ones I've listed, you'll notice that all of them, or at least most of them, seem to have this common trait of not only consuming blood, life force, or flesh, but also being young, sometimes ageless, with long, black hair, just like Tomi. The fact that I've been able to associate so many of these yokai to Tomi through their various stories and traits leads me to believe that Tomi is not based off any one particular yokai, but rather is based off all of them and is reintroduced as an alternate type of yokai every chapter as a sort of flavor of the day sort of deal. Now that the evidence that Tomi is a yokai succubus is better substantiated, we now know what she is. Now that we know what she is, the next step of natural progression would be knowing how she works. But that is for a later video, if I ever get around to making that video that is. So with that, I'ma send things here. Oh, and before you go, fun little fact. Did you know that 42, or Shini, is also how death is pronounced in Japanese? In addition, 42 is also the same amount of flesh pieces Tomi was cut up into by her classmates in Chapter 1. By the way, if you haven't thought of it already, if you really like this video, and you want more videos on Tomi and Junji Ito, let me know that you enjoyed it. Whether that be by commenting, leaving a like, subscribing, heck, even messaging me, as long as I'm getting your voice. As I've said before, unless I see some sort of reaction from you guys, I have no idea whether or not you guys want more of this. And honestly, I went out on a limb with this video. I don't think Tomi, and to a lesser extent Junji Ito, is all that popular with the modern anime audience. I'm not expecting a big reaction with this video, frankly. I mainly made this video because I'm a big fan of Tomi, and there's just no videos delving into Tomi. Like, at all. Maybe Uzumaki. Heck, there might even be a Gyo video out there. But to my knowledge, I have yet to see a video on Tomi. Anyway, that's enough out of me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and see you around.